Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to FBMC. Ladies in pink. I mean, all shades of pink. And y'all look beautiful. Y'all look beautiful. I am Mary Manzay. Y'all know who I am. And I am going to be your mistress of ceremony today. So right now coming up is a leader uh, in the pulpit of devotion. And I will come back to you guys. Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh, good morning, good morning. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Uh -huh. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Morning from the Faithful Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of Pastor Byron Hasfar and First Lady Elanda Hasfar. From Bishop N.C. Sergeant honoring them and First Lady Sergeant. We give God all the glory today Amen. because God is good and He is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Did he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on your way? Did he put food on your table? Clothed in your right mind to do the right thing. And that is to come out to the house of worship and praise his holy name. We want to thank him and we give him all the honor all the grace that he gives to us and all the praise because all the glory belongs to him. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm not talking about yesterday because yesterday is gone. I'm not talking about tomorrow because tomorrow may never come. I'm talking about today the day that God gave us. We may say that it's Women's Day. We may say that it's Men's Day, Children's Day, Sunday, even your birthday. But it's God's day. Hallelujah. And we will give him all the praise and all the glory. Here at Faith of Missionary Church, we come in to praise him and to serve, and we go out to praise him and to serve. So our morning scripture this morning is coming from Psalms 113. I've quoted part of that scripture already in my introduction, in my exhortation of exhorting the Lord and praising him because he is worthy, so worthy to be praised. Psalm 113. Praise ye the Lord. Praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. When you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, praise ye the Lord. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? 
who humble himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the dug hill, that he may sit him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He makes the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now we will have a prayer by Minister Darlene Wesley. Glory be to God. Prepare your hearts to praise and to give thanks unto the Lord. Sister Darlene. Amen. <coughs> It says, be ye ready. Play me a good little song, because I'm not going to sing, but I need you to pray a little song. Yeah. Because it's a little heavy in her. God has been too good for us to enter into his gates and don't give him thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but he woke me up. But have everlasting 
in life, Lord God. And for that, we say thank you, Lord God, for your love, Lord God. Thank you for being a God of second chances, Lord God. Thank you for being a God that restores and heals and delivers, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for being the one that gives us peace, Lord God, in the midst of the storms, Lord God. Thank you for upholding us with your righteous hand, Lord God. And we say thank you, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God. We don't take it lightly, but we say thank you, Lord God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, Lord God, you said you would raise up a standard, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, you'll shield and protect us, Lord God. That though the weapons may form, they would not prosper, Lord God. So we speak to oppression and depression, Lord God. We speak to mental disease right now, Lord God. We speak to bitterness, anger, Lord God, sickness, Lord God. We speak to it in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, you say we shall live and not die, Lord God. You say we should be the head and not the tail, Lord God. You say we shall be above and not beneath, Lord God. You say we be the lender and not the borrower, Lord God. You said in your word, Lord God, that we are above a royal priesthood. And for that we say thank you, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for blessings coming out and coming in, Lord God. Thank you for your cover, your blood that was shed for us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the overseer of this house, Lord God. We thank you for the pastor of this house, Lord God. We thank you for the first lady of this house, the deacon, the, the deaconess, Lord God, the ministers, Lord God, the hospitality, Lord God, the music ministry, Lord God, media, Lord God, hospitality, urchins, Lord God, just for the people of God, Lord God, that assemble here today, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, we didn't come here for no shape, form, or fashion, but to give you glory, Lord God, because we know we are victorious in you, Lord God, and in you, Lord God, we have the victory, Lord God, that you are able to deliver us, Lord God. You are able to sustain us, Lord God. You are able to heal us, Lord God. You are able to set us free, Lord God. So we release healing in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service today. Holy Spirit, take over, Lord God. We decrease right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let your healing power come forth. And we ask you, Lord God, to bless the woman that's going to bring your word, Lord God. It's going to break the bread of life, Lord God. To encourage the heart to change lives, Lord God. That's going to save people, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, it's going to reach those, Lord God, in other postcards of the world, Lord God. And Lord God, it's so much I'm saying, what must they do to be saved, Lord God? And Lord God, we give you glory and we give you honor, Lord God. Because no weapon, Lord God, that is formed against us will prosper, Lord God. For we have victory in you. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. And I thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. and be glad in it. That was 118. You go on down a little, uh, 122. It said, let everything, no, 122. The 150 said, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, saints, praise ye the Lord. Again, I am your mistress of ceremony. I'm not here to pump you up, but we here to celebrate, to celebrate this annual day of uh, Women's Day. But not only to celebrate this annual day, y'all. We here to lift up Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. That's what we here for. So I'm here to give you the welcome. So we here, to, the women are faithful. We're here to give you this welcome. We're here to say to all our visitors that you are welcome. You are welcome to praise with us. You're welcome to dance with us. You're welcome to lift up the name of Jesus with us. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. Now we will have a selection from our choir, the women's choir. 
an inspirational speaker coming from Sister Anita Lott. Who have yet been a, a mad 
dead black woman dear daughter the lord i say the lord has heard your cry and send you greetings and salutations from the word of god with your instructions first you need the lord right now yeah. don't you wait tomorrow is not promised swiftly now don't delay ask the lord to take the this madness away from you ask the lord to create in you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you whatever it takes mad woman make up in your mind that you are all in and all thy ways acknowledge him and i guarantee you he will direct thy path in your anger my daughter sin not i said sin not when you're angry, sin not, and touch not the unclean things. Because let me tell you something, vengeance does not belong to you. That vengeance belongs to the Lord. And God said, I shall repay, saith the Lord of hosts. Yeah. The best remedy for a mad black woman, you have to get your mind right. Yeah. I say, sisters, you got to get your man right. God will keep you in perfect peace when your man is stayed on him. Then you got to work on your forgiveness. Forgive us this day our daily bread. And forget those who have trust us, passed against us. And lead us not. I love this one. God was telling me because I was always trying to set them up. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from all that is evil. But that is my kingdom. It's God's kingdom. The power and the glory. And he said forever and ever. And he ended with amen. Glory be to God. Stop wasting your time. Mad black woman being mad. Enter to your gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts up. We praise him, uh, be thankful unto him, I said, uh, and bless his name. You know why? Because it is the Lord who is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth uh, endures unto all generations. Let me tell you something. God is the specialist uh, that will make your enemies uh, your footstool. I am a living witness. Uh, he will have those that have already passed on write you a check from the grave, send it fast, seal, and deliver us straight as yours and straight into your bank account. I'm a witness. Go into the house of the Lord, my daughter. Stand fast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because let me tell you something, you set up in the house of the Lord. God knows how to set you up, baby. He got a setup for you. I'm trying to tell you. He prepares you a banquet hall. Right down, right here. Right down in the middle of all of your enemies. Every last one of them gets to looking at you. What's wrong with all? But God has set that table right there in the presence of your enemies. And they get to looking at you because you're shining. Because God got all this oil on you. He know how to grieve up down. What the enemy knows that we have been with the Lord. So you stay in the house and you be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God has a way. I said, God has a way to set the mad black woman and the mad black man. He 
tomb. When you leave planet Earth, you don't want to leave her without God. So you make sure that you make, you make sure that you make sure, you make sure that you make sure that your salvation is gripping the solid rock, the solid rock of Jesus Christ. God is the one. He's the one that has your hand. He is the one that got your dimensions. God is the one that holds your directions. God knows what's going to happen before it even happens. We don't have that kind of information. And it is not even in the Bible where he tells us tomorrow you will run into something that you ain't going to be able to handle. But let me tell you something. I got to go to this one. Therefore, women, let it be known unto all men, whatever you do, don't you ever become a DFW. Well, Sister Lott, what in the world is a DFW? You know what? I am so glad y'all asked. Come give me a minute, and I'm going to tell you who she is. I know her, and y'all might know her too. The DFW, she is a desperate female. That is weak. The DF hold double, the DFW has had a hard life, has been beaten down, has she's become as weak as water. The DFW heart has been broken into a million pieces. The DFW continually walks around with her pain. The DFW does not necessarily have to reside in the Dallas whole in Dallas area. She can reside anywhere in the USA. She can reside anywhere abroad. But I guarantee you, somebody knows a DFW. The DFW is wearing a sign. However, her label is inconspicuous. Sometimes you don't even see it. She is extremely dangerous. And she can be very deadly. She will cause you spiritual and bodily harm if you mishandle her in the wrong way. She is in no particular denomination, cultural organization, creed or color. She does not discriminate against none of her victims. The DFW carries a lot of weight and she travels with her fragile spirit as broken glass in her hand. Can you imagine walking around with a broken glass on your hand all the time. That's the DFW. Most of the time, she is full of deadly poisons. I say deadly poisons. And will attack any time, but in no particular order. So you gotta be on guard. Her aim is to knock you out. Because she has been knocked down, knocked down, and trampled under the foot of men. Therefore, she will hit you unaware. She don't play. She strives for, for attention, even the wrong kind of attention. But she's loaded with the wrong stuff. I always pray. That's the remedy for this DFW. But let me tell you about this DFW that I know. I'm going to tell you about her. She was walking in darkness, not just darkness, but the Bible refers to it as a scared darkness. I didn't know who God was. Yeah, I'm the DFW. That's how I could tell you a whole lot about her. I was walking deep in sin. I didn't know who God was. I wasn't interrupting God, and I didn't want him to interrupt my day. But I tell you one day, hallelujah, God came down in all of his Shekinah glory, snatched this DFW out of her darkness and placed her in to his marvelous light. I tell you, Every sis that day, glory be to God. Every sis that day, I know him as my Shakata glory. I know him as my personal savior. I know him as my big daddy. I know him as my big brother. I know him as El Shaddai. I know him as my Jehovah Rapha. I know him as Jehovah Jesus. I know him as Jehovah Jireh. He is, glory be, my provider. Let me end you with this women. Women of God, listen to me real good. This came 
from the Holy Ghost. Women of God. Women of God. I say women of God. Women of God, listen to me. Don't you ever allow yourself to become a victim of the DFW. Because the Bible says no matter what, when we are weaker, we are stronger in Christ Jesus. Whatever it takes. I say whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Yeah, no, you may walk down the valley of a whole lot of shadows of death. But just remember that we trusted in the Lord and we lean not unto his own understanding. For in all thy ways, not half of them, I said in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. a lot for those words of inspiration. And now we're going to have our announcement coming up. like to pay your tithes, offering, donations, and love gifts to the church, you can do that now by Giveify.com. Search for Faithful Missionary Baptist Church. You should see our logo, select it, and start your giving. You can also download the app to always be with you on your mobile devices. And lastly, you can always scan the QR code that will be placed on the screen during giving. We thank you in advance for all of your giving. If you have a baby that needs to be dedicated back to the Lord, we are now accepting participants. Please see Sister Kathy Taylor or Sister Tashana Young. Parents, if you have children in our children's church, please listen for this message is for you. There will be no children's church until first and second Sunday in April due to Women's Annual Day and Easter. Also, there is a much-needed children's church parent meeting today immediately after church in the fellowship hall concerning Easter Sunday. Lastly, there will be a rehearsal for the Easter production Tuesday at 6 p.m., so please bring your children out to participate in Easter activities. We will have prayer every Saturday starting February 10th at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Come and pray with our pastor. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18 and 1. You can come pray and leave as you desire. This is a time to tarry or just come pray in the house and leave after you've heard from God. The 2024 Travis Lee Young Scholarship application is now available. Starting February 25th, 2024, the application deadline is April 28, 2024. All eligible candidates and high school seniors are encouraged to apply. For more information, please see Sister Kathy Conright or Sister Tashani Young. He is risen. Yeah, that's right. Easter Sunday service is here this fifth Sunday, March 31st. And guess what? We outside that day. Yeah, you heard me right. We will be taking the praise and celebration outside on the parking lot to share our worship with our community. So dress comfortable and join us for our Easter Sunday service, 1030 a.m. Faithful and friends, on behalf of our admin and first family, we would like to thank all of you for showing up and showing out last week at our pastor installation service. Words couldn't express how much we all appreciate you for all your contributions on that afternoon. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! Where has the time gone? We are one month away from our 64th church anniversary. And yes, it is still a big deal, 
but remember with no more compromising. So stay tuned for all the upcoming activities and events leading up to our church's big happy birthday. All right, faithful, you know what time it is. If it's your birthday, you know what to do. At the count of three, let me hear you scream. One, two, three. Happy birthday. All right now, faithful, if you're here and you're celebrating your anniversary and we want to celebrate you. So on the count of three, we're going to shout it out. One. Two, three, happy anniversary. Here at Faithful, we love to praise God and we love to love on God's people. So we welcome all guests, friends, and family. At this time, we want to just tell you welcome. So on the count of three, I'm asking the entire Faithful family, let's shout it to them, let's smile at them, and if they're next to you, why don't you give them a hug? One. Two, three, welcome to Faithful! And now, ushers will pass out connect cards so that we may stay connected with you. All right. Now this concludes our morning announcements. Mark your calendars and let's get ready to praise the Lord. Come on now, praise the Lord. Everybody, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Let's not forget this is Palm Sunday, amen. What did the people of God do? They laid out the palm trees, amen, the branches and all the clothing. And Jesus came down, they didn't say, Hosanna to the highest. Can we praise the Lord and give him glory? Hosanna to the highest because he's worthy to be praised he's worthy to be praised some of y'all ain't praised him yet he's worthy to be praised some of y'all still ain't praised him yet he's worthy to be praised let everything that has breath praise ye the lord praise ye the lord praise the Lord. God is worthy. He's worthy. He told us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Why? Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. That's why we got to bless him. That's why we got to praise him because he's good to us even in spite of ourselves even in spite of our wrong even in spite of our crazy acting he's still good to us let the redeemed of the lord say so do i have any redeemed people do i have any redeemed people that god has snatched you out and placed your feet on a solid rock solid rock to stay Hallelujah, 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 yeah, da 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 ah. ah. God is good, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good, the Bible says taste and see. That the Lord is good. He's good, y'all. The Lord is good. 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 Somebody gonna get out the wild. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I didn't say hands for it is good. I said the Lord. The Lord is good. He's 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 good. Hallelujah. He's good. I want you to take about 
30 seconds to greet about three or four people around you and say the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Come on now, greet about three or four people around you and say the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Some of y'all ain't said nothing to nobody. Tell somebody. Touch some people around you and say the Lord is good. Greet somebody and say the Lord is good. Hallelujah, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Hallelujah, we want to take this time, amen, to welcome all of our visitors, amen, that are here, that are visiting with us, amen. We want to say welcome. We thank God for your presence. We thank God that you're here today, amen, to our social media group that are here watching us by YouTube and Facebook. We want to say welcome to you all as well. We praise God for you. I want to say thank you so very kindly to each and every one of you all for last Sunday afternoon. We had such, we had such a phenomenal time. The pastor installation service and you all absolutely showed out amen and i want to say thank you on the behalf of myself and lady handsport we want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you all showed us and shared so much love with us amen we know that faithful is a house of love but you all demonstrated that love to us on last week and I want to say thank you amen Bishop Wiley Jackson sends his love amen I know y'all enjoyed my mentor amen hallelujah so now y'all understand a little bit about how I am amen and my best friend Apostle T.G. Gardner amen send his love as well I know during the interview process, they asked me, who are your mentors? So now y'all have answered or y'all have seen those two, amen, that are my mentors that I love very dearly, amen. And I praise God for you, amen. We want to say thank you for yesterday, those of you, amen, that are celebrated Mother Flowers, amen, homegoing service with us, amen. Amen. We're still praying, amen, for the Flower family, but I want to say thank you for all our greeters and our ushers, and I definitely want to say thank you to, uh, uh, I call him Prophet, but Butler, amen, Deacon Butler, amen. He ran around here and was cleaning up and delivering food, he and Sister Ramsey, amen, because we also had a second uh, homegoing service. We're praying for Minister Haskell, amen. We had to a homegoing service for Michael Haskell as well, so we want to definitely continue to keep the flowers and plants and Haskell family in our prayers. Sister Britt, amen. We want to continue to keep her in our prayers as well, along with Sister Kaysen, amen. Sister Kaysen, amen. We lost a ride, my brother, amen, and we will be celebrating him on this Friday at 11 o'clock at the Golden Gate uh, funeral home. So we will have his services at Golden Gate this Friday, Good Friday at 11 a.m. So please, please, please keep all of our bereaved families in your prayers. Amen. Death waits on nobody. Amen. But one thing we want to make sure is that we're ready when that time comes amen so you don't have to be afraid of death you don't have to be scared of it just make sure that you love the lord jesus with all your heart mind body and soul amen and if you love him and you're saved and you're sanctified and filled with the holy ghost you don't have to worry about a thing amen because to be absent from this body means to be present with the lord amen praise the lord it is offering time. Amen. It is offering time. Amen. We want to take this time to partner with the Lord. Amen. We want to be cheerful givers. Amen. And we want to make certain that we sow our seeds. We don't want to rob God. 
amen. We want to make certain that we don't eat our seed, amen, but we want to sow our seed, amen. God has been kind to all of us, amen. I don't see anybody in here that was on the side of the road having to beg for food or having to beg for money, amen. I believe God has been a true, authentic blessing to all of us, amen. So let's make sure that we don't tip God, amen. We don't want to tip, tip him, amen. But we want to give of our tithe and we want to give of our offering, amen. We don't want to be sparingly in our giving, but we want to be plant bountiful in our giving, amen. Women, you all have envelopes, amen, for this Women's Day, amen. Make certain that you sow your seed. You know what your pledges are, amen. So we want to honor the pledges that you pledged on the board and vocally, amen. All y'all women, look at each other. Women, look at each other. Y'all look at each other. Say, baby, you look good. Come on, women, tell each other you look good, amen. Y'all look good, amen. Amen. Thank God for our brothers that are here, amen. Serving on the door, amen, and here acknowledging our ladies. Tell somebody, God, just keep on making a way. Tell somebody, he just keep on making a way for me over and over and over. Do I have any witnesses that God keep on making a way? I don't know what he, how he do it all the time, but he keep on making a way for me. He provides for my needs and even gives me the desires of my heart. Has everybody had an opportunity to sow your seed, amen? We have seed up here. the seeds that have been 
been sown. And you said that if we would give, that you would give back to us. Press down, shaking together, running over where you cause men to give unto our bosom. So we give in cheerfully, God, expecting you to bless us in ways we can't even imagine. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Back into the hands of Sister Manzi. Amen, amen, amen. Right now we're going to have the introduction of our speaker. And right after that, I women's chorus will give us a selection. Okay, so that's going to be Sister Harmony Panswar is going to come and introduce our speaker for today. There she is. Good morning, faithful. I give praise and glory to God this morning, who's the head of my life. And I also want to give honor to our pastor and first lady of this household. And I want to give honor to pastor and chief sergeant and lady sergeant as well. And I also want to give honor to my Mr. Incredible, my husband, Byron Hansbar Jr. <laughs> Today, I have the pleasure of introducing the uh, woman of this household, Lady Yolanda E. Hanspar. She is wrapped in royalty. Her grace knows no bounds, for she is draped in regal elegance. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. She is the woman who has continued to show me how to take my power back. As my father-in-law has continually stated, she is the baddest woman on the planet. My mother-in-law and our first lady, Yolanda E. Hanspard. Yolanda E. Hanspard is the middle child of Pastor N.C. and First Lady Sergeant. She has worked faithfully in ministry since she was a child as a choir member, praise and worship leader, and youth sponsor, and praise in motion, my ministry co-director. Hanspar could also be founded over the years writing, directing, and producing plays for Summer Lock-In and for Christmas and Easter. August 8, 2022, she was one of the eight members ordained as a minister at Faithful Missionary Baptist Church. She is a 20-year employee of the Soto ISD, where she served as a long-term substitute teacher, special education aide, theater arts director, instructional coordinator, and currently the assistant principal of Katherine Johnson Technology Magnet Academy. Hansbard is a DeSoto High School graduate class of 1996. She attended Louisiana State University and graduated from Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. She obtained her master's degree from Lamar University in Education Administration and is currently studying at Liberty University as a doctoral student in Christian leadership. She enjoys hanging out with her family and watching football in her free time. And then her favorite scripture is Philippians 4, 6 through 7, which states, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I ask that y'all stand and welcome our first lady after this musical selection.
for you all. Thank God for all ministers in the house. First, I want to say we thank God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I give honor to my pastor, my new pastor, Hans Farr. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the bishop, sergeant, and my mother, first lady sergeant. We thank you for being here for your support, for the deacons, the deaconess, the choir, the musicians, the media, each and every one of you. I don't want to forget nobody. Hospitality, nurses, guild, usher boys, you the people of God. You all can uh, just get your Bibles ready. But we want to thank God today. I thank God for my sons, BJ, Brian, Bryson. Thank God for my father in love for being here. And I thank God for missionary harmony. Amen. Yes, the Lord knew I wanted a daughter and he gave me one. And my daughter in love, and not only that, but Miss Chappelle and Mr. Chappelle were so kind enough to share all of their daughters with us. So when we all get together, we look like the Brady Bunch. I have the three sons, she has the three daughters, so we thank God for you and Lyric and my prayer warrior over there, Melody Chappelle. Thank God for you. I'm gonna tell you about this young lady how she would send me a prayer and say, God has laid you on my heart this morning, and I just want to pray for you right now. When I tell you the power that's behind that prayer, and it be so on time, and so I thank God for you. You know I love you. I love you all. And so we thank God for what he's doing in this season, even in our younger sons and daughters. He's raising them up. I don't know if you know it, but he's raising them up. We thank God for our young adult ministry. Those Hawkins back there, Sister Hawkins, Brother Hawkins, and B.J. Hens for Harmony Hens, uh, Sister Lot, Benita Lot. God is doing something wonderful in our young adult ministry and children's church. And so we thank God for them this morning. I don't want to be before you long, but I do want to say what God has said. Thank you for being flexible. I know I've changed a few times, but that number, that second number, if y'all can be ready after the message, I just wanted to go ahead and get up. If you can go with me to John chapter 8. Amen. 
thank God for all of the women annual day committee, our ins inspirational speaker, Sister Lot, this morning. Thank you to our uh, mistress of ceremony, Sister Manze, and all of you all that were on program this morning. Thank God for you. John 8, we're going to read verses 1 through 11. Now I'll ask you to keep your Bibles open because we will have a few more scriptures. And I also thank God for my oldest sister, Tornita, that is here this morning. And my younger sister that came, amen, Amanda, to sing that song. You all please continue to lift up my sister Rosalind in prayer this morning, her family, uh, Justin and Jade. Because as you can imagine, it's been a challenging week for her and our family. But how many know God is able He's able this morning. And so I thank him for his grace, his covering this morning. John 8, verses 1 through 11. And it reads, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they said to him teacher this woman was caught in adultery in the very act now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned but what do you say this they said testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him but Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst, when Jesus had raised himself up and said, no one but the woman, he said to her, and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Verse 11 says, she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And the word of the Lord is blessed. You may take your seats. And my topic today will be get up and come out. Go ahead and look at your neighbor now and let them know. Get up and come out. And before we start, I want to acknowledge how beautiful everybody looks in your shades of pink. You look beautiful this morning. Amen. And I know that uh, I'm reminded of the verse with uh, the scripture text with Mary and Martha, how uh, they were preparing for Jesus, his visit, and, and Martha was so busy and irritated by all that needed to be done in the house in preparation for Jesus, but because Mary wanted to just fit it, sit at Jesus' feet, it irritated Martha until Jesus let her know, Martha, Martha, you're irritated about all these other things, but Mary found something that was greater. It was better, amen? And so today I let you know you're looking good. You're looking really good this morning. But right now, we're going to set that aside because there's something that's better in this moment, and that is what God wants to do on the inside. Amen. We want to look good on the outside, but let's not take for granted that we get all this stuff together and we don't give the attention when God is speaking that we're so worried about how busy we are, the agendas, the schedule. I got to hurry up. I got to go. I got to get out. But when God is speaking... We want to be found listening and at his feet, amen? And so in this text, when we say get up 
and come out. If we take a look at social media, the different platforms, they are notorious for news, exposing the latest gossip, who cheated with who, the latest marriages, divorces, the biggest breakups, and the newest entanglements. Right. That's really what we see that's on the front that, that's just screaming each and every day. You get up before you can see anything else when we're looking at uh, the news. It, it just seems to be filled with those things and issues. And so even in the text, we know how it can be when we have people that want to concentrate on the wrong, on what's going on. They want to point out things that, well, why don't this person do this? Or look, they slipped, they messed up. Look what happened. Look what you found them in. And I remember uh, for years, uh, Bishop used to say how you can be so busy pointing that one finger at what somebody doing. Look at them, look at them, look at there. And you got three whole other fingers that's coming back at you. And so it just reminds us that we don't want to be so quick to want to point the finger because someone suggested maybe you don't know because you hadn't been asked. Or maybe you're not sure what you would have done because you haven't been in that position. So we want to always humble ourselves before God. And when he's speaking, we want to pay attention to the lesson. And so we see here what the Pharisees did. They brought this woman that was caught in adultery. And so I want to go through four things. The trial, the accusers, the verdict, and then the victory. And so here we see that they brought her there. And because of they caught her in the act of adultery, we have to understand the history about that. We do know the intentions of the Pharisees. It really wasn't about all about the woman caught in adultery, but can we trip Jesus up? Can we catch him doing something or saying something different so that we can point the finger and say, well, you're not being consistent because of the law of Moses said that if you caught in the act of adultery, that you should be stoned to death. But how many know that in the entirety of that scripture, Leviticus 20 and 10, I believe, it's not only the woman that was supposed to have been stoned. It says the man and the woman. How many know it takes two? So where was he is the question. And so we'll just go on with that. But just knowing that they planned on setting him up. But how many know you can't set Jesus up? He's the ultimate teacher. And so we want to learn lessons from how he did respond and what that meant. And so when you're on trial, here this woman is set in the midst. If you can just imagine and picture her, if she was caught in the act, if she might have experienced embarrassment or the fact that she was even found in the act. Maybe it was something that she felt like she was going to get away with, but however she was there, have you ever been on trial? Have you ever been in a situation where you weren't proud of it, but you wanted to find a way to get past it? to get over it without somebody constantly throwing in your face what you did. Have you ever been there? And so what do you do? What are your thoughts when you're now on trial and that the hands of others are going to predict whether you're guilty or not and what's going to happen to you next? And so even in this trial that the woman was set in the midst, we know that the word goes on to say, God, what do you say? And we know that it was testing Jesus and it goes on in the scripture and says, but what Jesus did, he stooped down and began to wrote, write on the ground with his finger as though he didn't even hear what was going on. And so many suggest or wonder, well, what was Jesus writing? What was he saying? What was going on? Could he have been reminding them of the Ten Commandments and that some of them hit them as well? Could he, he be reminding them of the grace and the mercy that he's extended toward them, we don't really know what he wrote, but we do know he was aware of the situation. Yeah. But here he extended grace and mercy, something that they weren't ready to give this woman. But can somebody say, thank God for Jesus. Even when the enemy want to count you out, even when the enemy want to keep reminding you that you messed up, you didn't do right, thank God for Jesus. 
And so it says he acted as if he didn't hear, and he continued, they continued to say, and he said, he who is without sin, you cast the first stone. Because when you are the accuser, you would assume that everything in life is going well, that you got everything lined up, and that you have no room for improvement. But we all know the truth, that there may be some skeletons, there may be some secret sins, there may be some things that's going on that some people want to label as little sin, big sin, or this sin is one thing worse than another, but how many know that sin is sin? And so in this text, it goes on to say, he who is without sin among you, let him throw the stone at her. And he began to write on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted went one by one. Can you just hear the stones falling and dropping when you start thinking about it? Now, wait a minute. I might not have been caught in that, but I do know what I was doing. I know what I was thinking. I know what I was planning to do. I know what I did, but I didn't get caught. So we got to be very careful and begin to learn from Jesus. Amen. But what we do want to understand that even in this verdict, even when they realized that everybody was gone, even when, when Jesus said to her, who's left? and realize that it was only the two of them standing, we want to be sure that we're clear that even though Jesus extended grace to her, that he wasn't saying, well, you continue doing what you're doing. Okay, let's be clear. Because it goes on when he asked, where are your accusers? And he said, has no one condemned you? Neither have I. But he didn't leave it there letting her know that I'm not going to condemn you, but he gave a directive. He was very clear in what his expectations were. And when he said, go and sin no more. So let's be sure we understand these definitions. One condemn is to pronounce someone's guilty, uh, criticize them, blame them, attack them. That's something that none of us want to be under and want to be dealing with all, all the time. So that's why we thank God for his grace, amen? amen. But when he says go and sin no more, let's understand what the word go is talking about. So when God says go, you got to get up, you got to move. That's an active verb. It's an, intransit an intransitive verb. It don't need no help. It doesn't need one thing to happen for it to be. So when God tells us to go, how many know you got to go? You got to get up, get out of whatever it is that you've been dealing with and, and in, and sin no more. How many know God wouldn't ask you to do something if he didn't already equip you to be able to do it? Do you think God is going to tell you go and sin no more if you feel like it's impossible? It's not impossible. So that's what we have to understand. So when we think about sin, let's think about what the Word of God says about sin. We know that Romans 3 and 23 says, all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. So we don't have to wonder or worry, is that applying to me? Or is, is, is he talking to me? He's talking to each and every one of us. Those are the expectations. First John 1 and 8 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We also know that in James 4 and 17, it says, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. So what we don't want to get caught doing is trying to find loopholes to get away with what we want to do to please the flesh. Because when we walk in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we know Romans 6 and 23 reminds us that the wages of sin is death. But we thank God that the gift of God is what? Eternal life. And so what we want to be found doing is exactly what God is calling for us to do because that's the trick of the enemy. He want to get you down and out and make you feel like, well, you already know what you do, what you did, what you've been doing, what, you, what your history looked like. And everybody know, they remember, they were there, they heard about.
about it. They got it on video and so forth. But when God has set you free and when God has said, I am not going to condemn you, go and sin no more. We got to thank God for the blood of Jesus, amen, that will never lose its power. And so we don't want to be guilty of, as Romans 6 and 1 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. God forbid. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Can we think about the cross? We thank God for Palm Sunday. And we thank God for the resurrection. We thank God for the crucifixion that we are in that season. But it's time for us to come out of darkness. We got to come out of darkness. We can't play with it. See, we in that season where the world, where we even see the church in certain instances, that's trying to mix and mingle and do what the world doing to draw the world in. But we are responsible for this gospel and to tell the truth. If he says, be ye holy for I am holy, we got to be holy, amen? And if it's something that we are dealing with, we have to be able to go to God and be transparent because he already knows anyway. And to let him know, God, it is me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. I need you to work on me, God. Work on my mind, God. Work on my heart. Because these thoughts that I have, the desire, the lust, and all of these other things that I know is not like you, it's going to take the power of the Holy Spirit to keep me. And how many know Jesus will keep you if you want to be kept? So we got to be honest and say, do we want to be kept? Do you want to be kept by Jesus? Because let me tell you about a phrase that I hear so often. Well, I just kind of fell into it. It just kind of happened. Uh, those were not my intentions. Well, I mean, one thing led to another and then bam. Right? But I just got one question. Sis, bro, why were you there? If we know, if you know what you like, if you know what your weakness is, don't play with the devil. And I think we got to just be real with it. We got to stop playing. Because see, that's how the enemy tripping us up. We say, I'm just going to go, but I'm not going to go all the way. I let him rub on me a little bit, but then we going to stop. No, you don't play. Don't play with it. We got to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. And when he does, don't shun him. Don't say, no, nah, I got this one. No, nah, I was just a little longer. Because as we see, time is winding up. We see death has no age and does not discriminate. We don't want to be lost when God has already given us the key and we found. There is so much wonderful blessings and favor of God being in his presence and living for him. What do you want with darkness? It's still the same penalty. It's death. And here God is, he's already paid the price all the way on Calvary. He took all sin for us. He stood in our place for all of the things that we're wrestling with. But see, when we come to Jesus, we have to come knowing that we're dead to sin. Sin has no power over us. So we don't have to say, well, I just didn't know. Because I do want to read this verse in 1 Corinthians. It reminds us, well, what happens when we feel like we need strength? It reminds us that 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, what the temptation, but with the temptation, will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. There's an escape. There is a way out. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit being a keeper. We can't compromise. That's our theme for the year. Don't compromise. Get up and come out get up and come out you got to get up out of hatred get up out of bitterness get up out of anger malice disobedience when you know god has already 
already told you. Stay from over there. Don't call no more. Stop answering the phone. Why you playing with it? God is giving direction. He's our father. He's the master. He's our Lord. He has created us and know all about us. And there's nothing but miracles and blessings that's waiting on us. Let us not be the delay. Can God trust us with it? Don't get caught up in, well, I ain't been caught yet, and so you push it. You push it to see how far you can go. You don't know if you're going to make it out. So many thought they had one more time, one more night, one night only, one more round, go around, and didn't make it out. Tragedy hit. Then what? So we don't have to condemn each other. We don't have to look down on one another because all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. So we're not going to get down to, well, well it mine wasn't that big. Sin is sin, but we thank God for the word of God. The gift of God is eternal life. So we don't have to continue to be angry. We don't have to continue doing what we're doing as if this is just the end because they've already written me off. I might as well just keep doing what I'm doing. But Jesus said, I'm not going to condemn you, but go and sin no more. That's the grace because we already know what it could have been. We already know what it should have been. We already know the penalty. We already know the consequences of sin. A lot of us are, we, are, we have the bruises, we have the scars, the stories, and we can tell you about them. That when we were lost in sin, we was doing something we didn't have no business doing. And the things that God allowed us to go through to get back to where we were supposed to be. I don't know about you, but you looking at one right now. I can tell on myself because I'm a testimony. When I said, I don't want this, I don't preach it. Being called pastor's wife, I don't want none of that. I said that years ago. When somebody came at LSU, I was a freshman, and, and told me, yes, woman of God, you will be, and I'm just crying. She's like, baby, why are you crying? I said, because I don't want that. I don't want it. No, I don't want that. I mean, just tow up. How we going to tell God what we don't want to do, and we are his creation. We are his sons and daughters. But I said, I ain't qualified for that. I ain't worthy of that. I don't even want that. I even told pastor, you might as well go and find you somebody else that want that, because I did. I didn't mean it. Uh, let's, let's be sure we're clear. That was then. Not today. Okay, we clear. But at that young mind, that's what I was thinking. But it wasn't even about me. How many know it ain't about you? Tell somebody, this ain't about you. Somebody dying on their way to hell. And Jesus want to know, will you be a vessel? Will you go? Will you obey my word? Because if he call you, he going to qualify you. If you humble yourself, he'll see through you. He'll give you the words to say. But what he want to know are you open to walk up right? Are you going to live for me? Are you going to speak for me? Are you going to do my will and not your will? How many know you got to have a nevertheless? Lord, that ain't what I wanted to do. That ain't what I wanted to plan for my life. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And while I'm sitting up playing with it, sitting up here trying to make a point, I ain't the one. And I just went crazy. Just craziness. But I thank God for a praying mother and father and husband and sons that got on their knees and cried out to God on my behalf to cover her, Lord. Don't let her go out like that. And what God allowed me to go through all kind of sickness, all kind of stuff, to get my attention. I thank God for another chance, another opportunity in life. Because he could have took me out. He could have said, okay, I got some 
for you? You don't want to obey? You don't want to do my will? Fine. He could have took me out. But he gave me another opportunity. And I began to cry out to God. And I let him know, God, that ain't what I want. But nevertheless, it's not about me. I yield to your will and your way. I obey you, God. I surrender all unto you. And then we got to repent. And we got to turn from my wicked ways. Everybody may have a story, but some are not still here to tell it. Don't take it for granted today. When he says, go and sin no more, turn your back on it. Don't go home to it. You got to make up in your mind, I got to disconnect from this thing. We can't partner up with the world in darkness and try to figure out why our lives are so chaotic. He's already let us know what he's calling for. He said, I'm not trying to hurt you or harm you. I'm trying to give blessings to you. I'm trying to show you my love. I'm trying to extend my grace, my mercy. I want to heal and make you whole. I want to give you a life worth living. But we got to do it God's way and not make up in my mind, our minds of what we want to do. He's the Savior. He's the Creator. He's the one that went all the way to Calvary. And he is the perfect example of getting up and coming out. We got to go and sin no more. We can't do the pimping. We got to do some praising. Turn your back on that thing. Turn your back instead of adultery. Decide to abide in Christ. We got to make a decision. Instead of gossiping, let's glorify God. See, we got to have a place. We got to exchange what we've been doing for what God is calling for us to do. We can't engage in pleasing the flesh, but let's walk in the spirit. And what we know that Calvary, when we reflect on Calvary, we know that when he tells us to go and sin no more, we got to get up and come out. We know that he already went all the way to Calvary. Everything that we're dealing with, past, present, future, he's already died for. We thank God that he was buried, but he didn't stay dead. Because he got up with power. But not only did he get up, but how many know he came out the grave? He came out. So that's why we can get up and we can come out. He's already been the example. So come on and call on the name of the Lord. And you can be saved today. Oh, we got to obey the voice of the Lord. Stop listening to everybody. Pastor been preaching about hang up, turn away. We got to listen to the voice of God and what he's speaking. And we got to meditate on this word day and night. This is where our strength comes from. You wonder, well, what do I do when I come out? Get in this word. Get to praying. Asking God, seeking his face. Lord, give me direction. I tried to do it my way. All this quick thrills on you about eternal life. And so, E, we got to establish Jesus is the Lord of your life. Will you make him Lord today? Who is Lord over your life today? Take a moment and think about it. Where does all of your time go to? Your energy go to? Who you listening to? When God is saying, Jesus said, go and sin no more. But we still thinking about setting up another time and date for something. We got to think about what God is saying. We thank him for his grace. But let's not take it for granted. We should want to love him, honor him, adore him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's giving direction. He's speaking to your heart right now. So when you come out, you are overcomer. You're uncompromising.